So this is your first war game? Yes, it is. And you? Oh, no, this is my first today. So this is the review for the board game The Shores of Tripoli, the good and bad about it. By the end of this video you will know if this war game is something you'd like to try. We have six burning questions about this board game that we will answer, but before we do that... What is it all about, Giannis? This is about the war between the United States and the pirates of the Barbary Coast. Do you know what Barbary Ooh. Coast is? This one. Yeah, pretty much, that's the coast. One player takes the role of Americans, the other player takes the role of the pirates. And the first player to accomplish their goal by the end of the game wins. If nobody accomplishes their goal, the game ends in, in a, a tie. Draw. What's the difference between tie and a draw? The pirates win in two cases. One, if they steal all the gold from Americans. It was way harder to make it rain 200 years ago than it is now. <laughs> Just saying. Also, if you sink American ships, these big ones. Frigates. Four of them. If you do that, you also win immediately. And there's the other half, which is the American half. You can win in two ways. Both of them are a bit different. Signing a peace treaty. If you fulfill objectives on a peace treaty card, and there are like four of them, you play the card and you win. You mainly need to uh, clear out the uh, main cities from uh, pirate ships and also have to invade uh, by foot in Dern, this city right here. And then if you completed that, you can play the card, uh, but you can play it only like late game. You can't play it immediately. Pirates have a lot of time to try to steal their booty. And the other way is just invading the Tripoli, which is like the HQ of the pirate. If you invade it, you win as well. But it's tricky. It's very tricky. Okay. Tricky Ricky. <laughs> That's the name of the pirate captain. Arr, tricky Ricky. The game is divided into rounds, which are years, and each year is divided into four turns uh, where each player will play cards or do action. For example, the American player can play a card for its event, or discard to move ships, or discard to build gunboats in Malta. So basically, that's it. And if you move ships, that can start combats and then you fight. The pirates can do similar things, but not the same things. You can also play a card to resolve its event. You can play a card to place a Corsair here which will help you raid. The most important thing, the third thing, is you can discard a card to raid, which will mean that you will roll dice to try to steal gold, but the Americans can try and counter-attack, I guess? Intercept, if I have ships like near your HQ, I can try to intercept before you can steal. Everything comes down to dice rolling. Excuse me? Excuse me? <laughs> He's allergic to dice rolls, especially in this <laughs> game. So if you start a combat, you roll dice. If you're trying to raid, you're rolling dice. If you're trying to intercept, you roll dice. And in this game, pretty much the only sixes count. Unless you're raiding, then five and sixes count. Body count's not gonna be big. Kinda thematic, as guns at that point weren't too accurate. Your dice, is, your dice rolls won't be as well. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It's, it's just full of history. You play those parts, and all the cards are full of events that really happened, and you kinda go through that history and try to maybe rewrite it or not. War games usually, when you say those names, you're like, mm, I don't know. But this one is quick to the table, quick to play. And we're gonna talk a lot more about this game in this video. So we should jump to the first question, which is Who would you get this for? Three, two, one. Historians in a rush. Not Giannis. <laughs> So I taught this game to Giannis just last week. And let's just say I've seen snails with more impressions like on their faces. And we'll talk what Giannis is like as we go. Oh no, the, <laughs> yeah. this is going to be one of those videos. Yeah, huh? so you have to stay tuned. What does this exactly mean? It's very important that you're into history to play this. But is it? It is. Yeah? It totally is. Yeah. So see, Giannis, are you in history? Yeah, I love it. In a rush because it's very quick paced and all the events everything is like simple quick to learn feels like you can put it on a table quickly play it have a interesting time and then um, <laughs> move on okay historians in a rush what are the best things about this game third best thing about this game is the uh, components well, everything you see here looks good. My favorite part, these cards and visuals on them. The drawings are amazing. I love the style of it. All these ships and everything feel just quality. Why didn't I put down components? Yeah, and it is very important for an intro board game. Yeah. Okay, my number three is gonna be flavor. There is a lot of it. It might not seem at first, but they do include a historic supplement tells you why and how and which card means what exactly but it just feels like it's oozing flavor it's um amazing my 
thing is history as well. One time was all I needed to understand what it's all about. Play a card and you immediately from the actions that you do see all the references. You play it and you feel like, oh, I learned something, which is amazing for a game that's all about history. My second one's gonna be the rules. The rules generally are super simple. You just play a card for its event and it just says what it does on the card or to move ships or raid or build ships. It's super simple. Biggest complexity comes out of that some of the cards have quite a bit of text. And when we played, you were a bit tired and you were like, so much text. Other than that, super simple rules. I have one card, which kind of agrees with your rule as well. I do like that. All you do in your action is choose one card from your hands, from six cards usually, and you play that card and just do what the action is. They are very, very, very different and very specific, which is uh, fun. The minuses, yes, you said there's tons of texts and some symbols would, would be cool, but I guess it doesn't go together with the um, like history part in it. And you can play that one card as an event, or you can use it in a different ways. And that's what you want. You want choices in games, and this one has those. Okay, my number one is going to be ups and downs. So this is a huge positive for me. Might not be for everybody, especially for Euro gamers, because <laughs> this game has swings. I mean, like, full 360 around the beam swings. It has a lot of dice rolls. And if you roll badly, you can't win this game. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing to mitigate the dice rolls. The only way is you're just trying to build more ships and just roll a bigger chunk of dice and hopefully that helps. But what it does is it adds replayability and an excitement for me. Yes, there will be downs and sometimes you will not have the cards you need and you're like, ah, I needed this one card now, but it's gonna come later. It just makes it exciting. You don't know how this game's gonna go and you're working with the best you have. And yes, sometimes it'll be more downs than ups, but you're trying to come back. Dice are just not rolling. Let's just prepare for that different and wild and I love it. It just makes me feel excited to play this. Do you need this for the bad things, the ups and downs thing? I have already them written down. So we should jump to the next section, which is why this game might not be for you. This is the section you were waiting for. A full disclaimer here. So this is your first war game and you pretty much so are a Euro gamer and thematic gamer. RPGs. And RPGs, yeah. So I play pretty much so anything that calls itself a game and I do enjoy war games a lot and I've played war games a lot. And what I thought this is a perfect intro war game. I thought this, stop shaking your head. <laughs> Can I finish? Just, yeah, just a you're, perfect you're making intro it worse. No, it, you're giving me time to write down more. No, 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 okay, go. It's not for you if you're just plain simple, not into history. Really? But it's... Yeah, because I don't think that mm. the game-wise, there's tons to do if you won't enjoy the events happening, if you don't want to follow along the uh, history simulation as, as well. I think it's such a big part of it. If you don't want to read that paragraph that Jans mentioned about the history, then I don't think it's for you. Hmm... I'd put it lower. Let's put it in the middle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, okay, or even there. So mine's gonna be the rule book. So the thing with the rule book is that it's short, which is fine, but it just doesn't have any examples on the board. And I wish it did just a couple of like, what is like that zone or that zone? And it's just pure text, 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 text. That's my one minor gripe with this game. Maybe I should remove it because there's going to be a lot of those. You know what? I I'm retracting my robot statement. I think you got it covered. And one thing is pointless actions. The worst combo that there is in this game is where you play a card, you place three ships there just for the other person to play a card, move his ships there and remove all of them just by playing a card. And I get that it's a history thing. No, but it's playing your odds. The other player might not have that card. It's freaking annoying. Nah. And as a gamer, you feel like that was just anticlimactic and it feels crappy. So this game shines if you get to play it more than once, I'd say more than twice. Because then you know what he mentioned, like, you know that that player has that card. And I don't feel it is a bad thing, it's just playing the odds. And I'm gonna yeah. put my next bad thing about playing multiple times. It becomes like a memory game. When you know and remember the opponent's cards, you're way better 
off than you were not knowing those cards. You play them and you just forget, forgot that that one person has the opportunity to have that card and it's like, ah, oh, no. I don't find games where testing your memory is something like really good, but here it's so, so important that you remember opponents and your cards and your deck. But it's gonna happen naturally after you play it two times. I'm not a big memory kind of guy. It's a good thing we have the same name, so it's easy. You know, I can remember what's your name. It just happens naturally, obviously, if you at least like a little, this game a little bit. It's the worthy opponent. It's not for you if you won't have a worthy opponent. If you don't have the other person to play it against, who's also just into also theme, also the card plays, also just simulating. Or if you don't have that, it's hard to recommend it. I'd always play this as a versus game. Never I'd play it as a solo again, because uh, it, it's quick, it's simple. All these things that you keep mentioning, I enjoy them. Scripted. It feels very much scripted, as I guess war games should do. You can comment on the comment on this. Events that happened in 1805 should happen in 1805, not sooner. So some of the cards will be useless early game, and some of the cards will be useless late game. That's why maybe it feels scripted to you. But obviously, some cards need to be played at a certain time. And I dislike that. Uh, and I think don't that play them. Just. Yeah, don't play this game. Fight right? the system. No, no, don't play them cards. Not satisfying unless you want a scripted game, which is... Do you think it's coming off as you're the offense and I'm the defense here? Do you yeah, think yeah, they're yeah. getting it right now at this point? Next thing is the bad luck. And I'm gonna... Whatever. <laughs> the diff all of these are bad, okay? First of all, you can roll tons of dice. You can roll 20 dice at some point. <laughs> you can roll none while the other person ro rolls something. It swings the game so much, which you enjoyed. I feel like it's kind of ridiculous. Here, only... S yeah, yeah, continue. I'm just gonna add it to the good things that I had ups and downs with your bad luck. Yeah. It's, it's the so, good thing. Is you know why that is? Because it's a simulation of war. Exactly. Most, especially that period of time, most will miss. But if you both know that most of the time you will miss, doesn't that kind of fixes it for you? Or are you just... F would it be better... If <laughs> would it be better if both would hit? four out of six times yeah that what <laughs> no but it's important that you want this authentic feeling that you are in this part of the world at this time and you are playing this history game where you're okay with not progressing sometimes or feeling bad sometimes i'm not saying that those things are necessarily bad things it just means if you don't like any of those then this might not be for you are there any people out there who have played this and are not war gamers let us know what do you think but let's move on to the how long is the honeymoon for me because obviously you didn't get that far. <laughs> One. You will want to crack it. There is replayability. Even though the cards are the same, the things are scripted as I mentioned, there's still tons of replayability because even though the first time was kind of horrible, but I blame you. What? Because I crushed you, you mean. There's this big challenge which I feel like you want to find the like right rhythm, right card. You want to find out, okay, if he plays that, what should I do? There's tons to do, so there is tons of replayability, I feel like. Cards are gonna come up differently. There's a pretty big deck of different cards, and they're all almost different. But for me, this is a go-to war game now. For me and a friend of mine who are really into war games, and all the things you mentioned, why this night might not be for you, is exactly why this is for me. I will put a link in the description where you can try it online without actually getting it. Obviously the physical game is tons better, but that's the place where I played quite a bit of this as well. So what's the best alternative? Three, two, one. Okay, mine's Manur. What he said. Or <laughs> Katan. What? <laughs> Here's my point. This is my first war game, so I can't like compare it with other war games. If you want to like show board games to somebody, you will show Catan. I agree that this could be something you would show to a new board gamer. That's why the But Catan not a to... new board gamer. No, no, not a new board gamer, but hmm, new... But maybe you should try. You need to find somebody who's you, you don't care too much if he's <laughs> into board games in general. You, you know, if they're played only Monopoly and Snakes and Ladders, this is an up for them. Oh, I'm not going doing any favors with that. <laughs> no, I didn't mean it. Cut, cut, cut. For me, it's uh, Manure. It's also a simple, quick two player tactical war game where you super zoomed in, you play out a single battle, you play cards to move your units, and you roll dice to see if they hit. And there's some tactical advantages. It's like a bit more wargamey Memoir 44, if you have played one of those. But I also found a lot of success with that one with players who haven't played a lot of war games mm. and didn't care much for randomness. Mm. And what the hell with the Catan? It has a lot of flavor as well, just as this one does. At least that's what our Patreon says. 
Oh, it's a Patreon secret message? Check out our Patreon page to know more, but you can leave secret messages in our videos if you support us. And now, the final rating. Ready? No. Three, yeah. two, one. Can't what? recommend. Really? Yeah. Oh my god. I have to equal this out. I had must-have war game. I'm just putting down it as a must-have. I'm coming in this from the perspective of just general board game. If I ignore that it's like a war game, then I can't recommend it. I feel like it's just too many bad feelings I get from this game. Because you lose, right? You're not into history, right? There's tons of things where I feel, ah, that was pointless. Ah, that feels crappy. Oh, that... Bleh. <laughs> just... I would much rather play any other quick two-player game. Listen to him. He's smarter in, in these questions. Generally smarter. No. Anyway. Uh, Not even close. I'm kind of disappointed because I thought this is going to be the game I'm going to bring Giannis into war games. Oh, I enjoy this game to bits, but I have played a ton of war games. So this is not a clean slate for me. But one thing I can say is the older I get, the more I enjoy randomness. And I feel that this is a fantastic war game. It's gorgeous, it's easy to get into, it's quick, it has a lot of historical flavor. So this is a must-have game for me. And I think you should give it a try. Yeah, you should. Don't be like Giannis. Why? I, did. Ah, I gave, gave it a gave try. It a try. What are you talking about? I gave him multiple tries. I'm and just super into defensive mode right now. If you are a little bit in history and don't mind randomness, I think you can like this a lot. And that's it with our video. Thank you for watching our review of The Shores of Tripoli. I hope you now know that this game is for you. And remember that the best alternative to this game is Catan. So somebody asked you to put that in the video and you did it? I did it. And you can do it through Patreon? Yeah, exactly. Have we done this previously as well? Tons of times. Check out our what? previous videos. <laughs>